Okay, now I'm going to consider Jeb Bush. I am not fully decided, but I am leaning toward this guy. First of all, there's a site here called 2016presidentialcandidates.org, which is really kind of a master database of candidates and all kinds of stuff, primaries and caucuses. This is a really good site that you're going to want. So I'm going to put this in the video description. And the portal links are all up here. Okay, so this is going to be a place you're going to want to have permanently as your you know, website. It's got a lot of really important data on it, no matter who you vote for. It's nonpartisan. And then this particular page, of course, is on Jeb. But the home page is here and here and here. All right. So that's going to be in the video description. This is jo Jeb's website, his actual website. And you'll notice it's a little nicer, the layout. Okay, you got you start off with the header page, but see you could do that to meet him, and th th this to me this tells me a whole lot about him is the way he's talking about it. the first thing he talks about in meeting himself is his wife. This characteristic of the family I don't know if you've noticed that, but George W. his brother just finished writing a book about his dad not about his own presidency but about his dad and George W Herbert Walker the father who I actually didn't like while he was president I should have liked him better but there's I'll explain why I didn't like him in a minute he was always about his own wife Barbara these men are always looking at the other person. This is their, I don't know, maybe their mother raised them this way. And she doesn't really want Jeb to be running. Barbara Bush, his mother, does not really want him to be running. But there's something of um, calmness in this family. They're sort of like America's second royal family as it's turned out. I don't think they intended it this way, but that's how it's turned out. You have the Kennedys of the Democrats, okay, and you have the Bushes of the Republicans. And I'm sure Hillary wants to be able to say the Clintons as a second royal family, but really those two people, they don't have principles. I'm sorry, they don't. They have a killer instinct. They have um, a scrapper instinct, and it's, they're not 100% bad. Nobody is. But they're not like these people. Jeb, the first thing, when it says, meet Jeb, what does he say? Because, you know, he had to authorize this. The meet Jeb starts out with his wife. That's a happy man. Okay? It's really important for president to have a happy man. That's one of the things that distinguished Mikhail Gorbachev. He loved his wife. Really, seriously. He loved her. You could hear it in his voice when he talked. You could see it on his face. Just pick any of the interviews with Gorbachev where he's talking personally. He was totally in love with his wife. Jeb is totally in love with his wife. I'm not saying that as a moral issue. I'm saying that as a person who's balanced and happy. You know, his brother, George W., just finished writing a book about his dad's presidency rather than his own. That's the kind of people these are. Does that mean that they make good presidents? No, but it sure helps. They're not full of themselves. They're actually in the business of being in politics because they want to do something good. Now, are they or are they not doing something good? That's another story. But this this helps. This is a happy man. Look at him. He's a happy man. You look at Jeb Bush and you know exactly what you're getting. Of course, that's kind of the problem, too. Because this man, see, he's happy. Look at him. That's not a feigned smile. Okay? And he's really tall. He's like 6'3 or something. He's at least a foot or foot and a half taller than his wife. Doesn't matter to him. And my pastor called right man, right woman. Each one of these bushes shows that in spades. 
okay? And it matters for a certain segment of the country. If they're happy, you're happy. What we liked about Reagan, what made us feel good about Reagan, Reagan also was happily married. He was happy. You know, the prince and princess live happily ever after. We thought or wanted to believe that John F. Kennedy and Jackie were happy. My, par my parents, my mother especially, was all hung up on Jackie Kennedy. That's all I ever heard growing up. Jackie this, Jackie that, Jackie the other thing. I probably became Republican because I was sick of hearing about Jackie Kennedy. Okay? Not, no, you know, it's not her fault. My mother was just addicted to her. So was my grandmother. But they, she was a happy-looking person. That matters in presidential runner. What is happy about Donald Trump? He does not look happy. He looks angry all the time. He's, he's self-centered, and he's always angry. This man in front of your face right now, he's not self-centered. None of the Bushes are. It's a really amazing thing. They aren't. They're actually, you know, um, outward-looking. I wouldn't exactly call them altruistic, but they're outward-looking. Their, their inner self is somehow satisfied, which means that the rest of them is free to look outward at whatever else is going on. Now, that doesn't guarantee that they're going to be the best guy for the job, but it helps. And it sure helps us when listening to them. Okay? So that's me, Jeb. News, obviously. Issues. Reform and growth. I don't like... This is a better designed website than Trump's or Cruz's, but it's got it's quirky. See, because when you 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 put your finger on the selection, it darkens. That's not it. This should be this. The whole coloring is wrong. Okay, and I haven't I haven't overridden the colors. These are the natural colors. The only thing overridden is the font. I'm using my own Comic Sans font. Okay, this is not a really good organization. Like, for example, you have to go to Reform and Growth and Reforming Washington, and, and the tax policy for Jeb is split between these two. And I'm not going to cover his tax policy because, really, um, Donald Trump copied from him, and Donald Trump copied from Cruz. So I've already covered Cruz and I've always covered Trump. Jeb's is a little bit different, but not enough to cover it separately. What distinguishes him is his defeating ISIS positions and his border security positions. And that's where I guess he's going to be talking about immigration. Okay? He's got certain issues on these other things, too. I'm not sure I'm going to cover them because I don't want to... How do I want to put this? I don't want to influence you on who to vote for. What I'm doing these videos for is not so much to say don't vote or do vote for these people as much as I'm trying to show if you're a Christian thinking before God, what kind of thought process should you go through? Okay? Not necessarily like my conclusions are right, but you still see the process. Okay, and you can say I'm all wet and wrong for whatever reason you want. But we got to go through the process because this is a ruling. This is training and ruling. We're the real rulers. These guys really are servants in God's eyes. Julius Caesar was an unbeliever, and he was a servant of God too. Cyrus, Cyrus the Great, he was a named servant of God before he was even born in Isaiah. Uh, specifically Isaiah 45. Cyrus wasn't even born yet, as far as I know, when Isaiah 45 was written. Okay, because Isaiah 53, which is a later chapter, was written in uh, approximately 714 um, B.C. Isaiah's ministry began about 756, 753. 753 being the so-called birth date of Rome which it really wasn't. It was 750, but that's beside the point. Okay, so here with Jeb, the big issue 
in his case is okay well look he's 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 got he's got a decent organization here okay and you can look up each of the items and decide for yourself what they should be now the big problem with Jeb is because he's a happy man he's not interested in promoting himself he's the exact opposite of Trump and the reason why you know I can sort of understand that either he or his campaign manager is doing what I consider to be the wrong thing um, a lot of negative ads against Trump is because Bush because he, he this is look at this face everything that the real guy is is exactly what you see what you see is what you get with him just look for a minute I gotta get something Use one John one nine when you view these candidates because God gives you an insight into the person. Okay, because you're electing a person for a job. Anything that he states as a policy now, the minute he gets into his job is going to be different. It's just like you train for a certain occupation when you were in school. And then as soon as you get out of school and you get into the actual occupation, you find out, oh. Half of what I learned in school is bogus. Yeah. So half of what their policies are aren't going to be what their policies are once they get in office. So the most important thing you can do is vote the person. Not the party, although you kind of need to know something about that too. That will be a factor. But it's not primary. What's primary is the person. Okay, and he doesn't have to be a good person. You have to think, okay, like an employer, like a ruler, like a king, would I hire this person for this job? Because that's kingship training for you, no matter who you vote for. Okay, this guy, you just look at him and that's, that's him. He's not capable of being a good liar. He's really not. His brother isn't either, and his father wasn't either. If they were fibbing, you could tell. They didn't do it often, but they did do it on occasion. They just, they wear their hearts and their whole thought patterns right in front of their face. To me, that's an important quality in president. The honesty of it, the openness of it, even when they're trying to be cagey. Because you know, see, they're, it's not slick willy, okay? Although I don't think Clinton was quite as bad in some respects um, as I did initially okay but anyway you want to look at each of these individual things and we're going to look right now at border security because I just finished doing the dump Trump on immigration and I closed by saying that Jeb Bush's policy was better okay now this is a chatty Kathy style of explanation that's the style he's adopted for all of his answers. So they're long answers. And that's kind of good. In other words, you're not just getting information that answers a question. You're getting the flavor of the person. And, and the other thing that's kind of interesting is that it's very clear to me that he wrote his own stuff. I'm sure he had an editor or a ghostwriter, and then he made, you know, additions. But see... When Clinton and I, remember when we, we went to meet Jeb? Meet Jeb. My life changed when I met my wife. Nobody wrote that for him. I mean, he might have had an editor or, you know, somebody looking at it and saying, hi, you want to change this a little bit? This isn't so clear. But that's him talking. That's Jeb. This is what I think's wrong with his campaign is they're not showing him. They're talking too much about Trump and, and the competition. Just let Jeb talk. Well, but they're not doing that because the campaign manager is an idiot. So here's how you get that. You go to his website and you listen to him talk. And then you decide. Because he's really chatty Cathy here. This goes on and see he's got pictures of his family. See, you know what you're getting with this guy. There's, there's no hidden anything with him. Okay, look at, look at. You can't be just, there you are, see. What you see is what you get. 
See? This is stuff that matters to him. Very personal. Okay? And I think we need that right now in this country. That's what made Reagan so attractive to both sides of the aisle. And I think we need that in this country. I need We need somebody who's a lot like Jeb, actually. Who, who, Jeb is very much a centrist, but he's much more to the right on certain issues where I think he should be. Um, but he's, he's chatty Cathy, okay? So when it says, when Clint Bollock and I published, we presented a number of proposals to strengthen America's integration policy. In other words, he wrote about this. Right. Well, he's Florida's governor. It would be front and center. He's already had experience dealing with it. Florida has always had, especially with Cuba, has always had problems with its immigration policy. Okay? So, you know, there we go. See, he's ch he's talking to you. He's not talking at you. He's talking to you. When he's writing, he's thinking of you. He's like his brother writing a biography of his own dad instead of himself. I think that's a distinguishing characteristic of Jeb versus other people. Okay? Forward-leaning border patrol. Okay? Technologies. You know, that's pretty much what Trump was saying, too. All right? Bolster the infrastructure. All right, interior enforcement. The point is this guy has had two years to formulate his policy. And you can bet that Trump had somebody copy parts of it. But see, 2013, he's been working on this. So if immigration is really important to you, there you go. Now, there's also a video where in like less than 30 seconds he encapsulates this whole immigration policy which I'll put in the video description it's a really good video that you should watch um, that'll help you just get his, the flavor of where he's coming at with it his proposals in immigration are what do you want to call it essentially and better than Ted Cruz's Okay, Ted Cruz had a, basically a, a statement that said, yeah, if you're here illegally, we're going to let you become legal, come out of the shadows is the key phrase both of these guys used, Ted and Jeb, come out of the shadows, but you will not become a citizen. It's just a question of you becoming legal. There are certain conditions for you to be legal rather than illegal, Okay. And there's sensible conditions like you can't take any federal benefits, you have to work, and there have to be income taxes charged against your income, and blah, 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 blah. Okay? And really, quite frankly, that's a sensible policy. They don't become citizens. Okay? Because they're already here illegally to start with. They would have to leave and enter the legal process. Okay? And, and that makes a whole lot of sense. That way the legal immigrant is not penalized by the illegal Im immigrant. Okay? And I'm sure that they'd have to hammer out the conditions. But his proposal and Ted Cruz's are a lot alike in certain ways. But Ted Cruz wasn't working on it this long. Okay? Ted Cruz only became a senator in 2012. Okay, so our boy Jeb has already been working on it longer. The problem with Jeb is, and this is a, a perception problem, he's not flashy like Donald Trump. All the immature like flash. Maturation is not something that they recognize, understand, or appreciate. This is a mature man. This is a happy man. This is a good man. Is he the best candidate for the job of all the presidential candidates? Well, that's for you to decide. One of the other things in his favor is he's a Bush. So you got Dad Bush. Of course, his dad is, is kind of ill now. And you got his brother. Now, his brother doesn't want to be in politics anymore, but his brother has a wealth of information and remembrance. And then you've got all the advisors of his brother that could help Jeb, too. 
Those advisors are seasoned people on the same issues that Jeb would have to deal with if he were president. So it's like you have a ready-made mix of people with the proper, what do you want to call it, familiarity. I'm not going to say experience. I'm going to say familiarity. Familiarity matters in politics. It matters a great deal in foreign policy. If Jeb got elected and his advisors his advisors were, you know, cut of the same cloth or associated with his brother, then when they go overseas, it's like old home week for the people in power now. You know, whether they go to Germany or or England or China, especially China or Russia. They all know each other. That matters. That cuts down time and problems and friction. Because if you got new people, then there's always the getting your feet wet problem. Okay? Now, I don't know if all the advisors are going to want to, you know, stay in this again because it's very grueling to be, you know, in the executive office. It's really a very big sacrifice for anybody to run for president now because we, the people, are so churlish. And the press, I hate the press. Just, it, they're disgusting. Okay? This is a man making a sacrifice. He's very clearly, truly a happy man. And he takes a very personal approach to writing up his position. This is him writing, not, you know, some pundit or somebody just hired. It's not that he didn't have anybody clean it. And one of the things I really liked reading the most is his expression of how he would defeat ISIS. Donald Trump just says, well, let's let Russia handle it. Trump doesn't know squat. This guy thinks. And see, see, this is his speech. It's somehow a transcription of his speech. So these are his words. Okay? And it goes, it's really long. So you get a real good sense of what the issues are and the problems are. And maybe you still don't want to vote for him, but you are informed. And isn't that what a president ought to do? Is show you the issues, show you the sides. And yeah, he takes a position. See, support the Iraqi forces. Be consistent air power. Okay? And the video that it's in the video description that's talking about immigration also covers this. And he's real good about... Bing, 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 this is what I do. Because the reporter was talking to him live with questions. And he really understood it. And he's standing in a sporting goods shop when he talks. So he's not reading from a teleprompter. This is a genuine man, okay, is what I'm saying. That's why I think he'd be a good president. All right? And he listens to opposition. He's not interested in insulting or grandstanding. He's interested in listening to opposition. He's interested, his basic premise here, when he's talking about defeating ISIS, is coalition, consensus. Let's get everybody together. We'll decide what we want to do. We'll act in concert. That's what his brother wanted to do. And his brother wasn't afraid of going out alone if nobody would come along to play. And that's what the father wanted to do. And, you know, a lot of the people hate the Bushes because they're oil people. And they say, oh, new world order. Okay, but it is a new world order. There is no conspiracy, honey. And all those dummies who talk about Bilderbergers and all that nonsense. Honey, if there were a conspiracy like you all think, then the, the Arabs would be dead by now. Nobody profits from having those pesky Arabs running around with possible dirty bombs. Okay, period. And Iran is just itching to use that. Itching. Okay. There's no conspiracy here. So study up yourself and see what you think about this guy. All right? Read it yourself. All right? Tax policy is here at Reform and you know, reform Washington. Okay, this is defeating ISIS, border security. I'm sure he's going to say stuff about veterans that's kind of, you know, milk toast. Regulatory reform, yeah, that's a biggie because the government is so over-regulating business that it's too expensive to work here. That's why they're shipping jobs overseas. It isn't really the taxes so much as the regulation. 
health care plan. He's going to appeal. He's going to repeal Obamacare, which we should. Obamacare is a total disaster. And Donald Trump wants to just replace it with a different version of Obamacare. So kill Trump. Okay. Cybersecurity. Well, I don't know why that's an issue. Defense. Yes. States rights. See, this is the only guy who seems to be more comprehensive in the issues he thinks are important. And then these are the states that are going to have the primaries. Here's how you can volunteer or shop. So I think that's all I'm going to say right now. I, the thing I wanted you to notice is that this is a very personable guy. He takes things personally. He's speaking in first person on his own site. He's his own man, so he's not like a slave to his brother's policies. Okay? He's his own guy, and he's got his own information. And if you look in the video description, again, that video that I've mentioned twice now, that video will show him talking. And I'll also put a link to his own um, YouTube channel so you can watch the guy talk. I seriously think that the campaign managers for Jeb Bush ought to just give, try to find a way to show him talking. Read him talking here and show him talking. Forget the other candidates. Just show this guy. The more people see this guy, the more they're going to want him. Because he'll make you feel like Reagan used to make you feel. Now, if you think I'm wrong, let me know. A lot of people think he has no charisma. I, I disagree. He's got that same sort of quiet happiness that Reagan had. That's not the reason to vote for him, but it sure helps. Peace out.